Good evening class. Tonight we will be continuing with our uh, lecture on the law on contracts. Uh, we will be discussing chapter 3 uh, which refers to the form of uh, contracts. So anyway, form is not a new concept actually. We have already studied this when we uh, studied, uh, when we discussed chapter 1, the general provisions of the law on obligations. So anyway, Form refers to the manner in which a contract is executed or manifested. So anyway, a contract may be oral, it may also be in writing, may be partly oral and partly written. So remember, if a contract is in writing, it may be a public instrument or a private instrument. So ang mga private instrument, lahat ng mga writings yan, they are, uh, remember, private instruments. Now, uh, kung gusto mong maging public yung, yung instrument, uh, meaning it is binding on the entire world, um, may publicity kasi siya. Remember, kailangan mong ipanotarize yung mga, pub, uh, yung mga private instrument mo, panotari mo. Once the private instrument is notarized, remember, it will become a public instrument. Now, uh, ano ba, ba, bakit ba kailang uh, ipanotaryo yung mga private instrument? Remember, uh, some uh, agreements, kaya mo siya ipapanotaryo. Uh, is because uh, it is required for validity. Also, uh, merong mga uh, instances, uh, hindi, may mga, hindi meron, talagang may ang mga uh, public documents lamang ang registrable sa Registry of Property. Also, remember, acceptable in court only public uh, documents. So, um, mahirap i-accept uh, at saka wala masyadong evidentiary value ang mga private uh, instrument. Pero, obviously, um, pwede naman, tinatanggap naman kaso lang mas maganda sana kung ito ay mga public uh, instrument na uh, in short na notary. So anyway to be recognized as a written contract all the terms of the agreement must be in writing. If a uh, contract is partly in writing and partly oral, it is uh, in effect uh, an oral uh, contract. So uh, remember also the classifications of contracts according to form. Um, a contract may be informal or common. Uh, these uh, contracts can be entered into in whatever form as long as all the essential requisites for validity are present. So obviously this will refer only to consensual contracts. So informal contracts may be verbal, may be uh, written. Now uh, please take note also of formal or solemn contracts. So uh, in formal or solemn contracts, uh, it requires compliance with certain formalities prescribed by uh, law para maging, uh, magkaroon ng validity yung contract. So remember, form here, when it refers to these kinds of contract, form is an essential element. So in addition to cost, object, and consent, for validity of the contract, a certain form is uh, required. So remember, um, the rules regarding form uh, is found in art Article 1356. So as a general rule, form does not matter for the validity of a contract. So contracts as a general rule can be entered into in whatever form. However, this will apply only to consensual contracts. Basta consensual contracts, meron siyang consent, object, and cause. The contract is uh, valid. However, obviously, because this is a general rule, there are exceptions. So, sometimes, form is required for validity. So, uh, the law will require that a contract be in some form, particular form, to be valid. Number two, form is required for enforceability. So, here, in number two, the law will require that a contract be in some form to be enforceable or to be proven in a certain way. So, para ma-prove mo itong existence ng agreement na to, it is required to be in some form para maging enforceable siya and so that it may also be proven in court. What else? Uh, number three, um, form is also necessary for convenience or greater efficacy. So, here the law requires that the contract be in some form for uh, the convenience of the parties and for the purpose of affecting third person. So anyway, we will learn all of this uh, one by one. So form for validity is required in the following um, instances. So uh, some instruments are required to be in writing to be valid. 
some instruments, uh, as you will notice later on, are required to be in writing and also required to be in a public instrument or notarized for validity. So, yung mga unang babanggitin ko, kailangan lang may kasulatan. Hindi kailangang nakanotaryo. Pero yung mga susunod na babanggitin ko later on, should uh, not only be in writing, but should also be in a public instrument or be notarized. Anyway, the first one is um, required to be in writing are donations of personal property. So, personal properties or movable properties. Example, cell phone, um, uh, kotse, etc. Motor, etc. etc. These are personal properties. Now, uh, remember, in case of donations, binibigay mo lang, hindi mo binibenta. Donations of personal property, the value of which exceeds 5,000 pesos. So, ibig sabihin, pagka yung value ng iyong personal property is 5,001 peso, remember, it is required to be in a uh, writing. Na. So, remember, the donation is required to be in writing and the acceptance of the personal property must be in writing. Otherwise, the donation is void. So, pag the donate, I hereby donate this motorcycle worth ganito ganito, more than 5,000 pesos to X ganyan. Tapos itong si X, sabi niya, I accept this donation, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, the donation is void. So, it should be in writing. Now, remember, if the value of the personal property is uh, 5,000 and below, it may be donated verbally. So, an oral donation will require only a simultaneous um, delivery of the thing or of the document representing the right donated. So, kung a less, a 5,000 or less, pwedeng ibigay mo na lang yung personal property. And uh, remember, there is no required formality para maging valid yung uh, donation. So anyway, uh, obviously, this rule in number one, hindi masyadong nasusunod ito dahil uh, tandaan nyo, yung mga cellphones niyo, I'm pretty sure that this is uh, not uh, not 5,000 and below. Pero, uh, dahil binibigay sa inyo, wala naman kasing nagko-question. So, walang problema. But uh, remember, in case really of donations of personal property, basta sumobra na sa 5,000, they are required to be in writing. Not only the donation, but also the acceptance of the donee of the donation. So anyway, number two, um, stipulations which will reduce the liability of the common carrier from extraordinary diligence to some other kind of uh, lesser diligence and also limiting its uh, liability. So remember, a common carrier is uh, refers to your public transportation. So buses, public utility jeep, uh, public, uh, public utility tricycle, etc., uh, etc. Et These are uh, uh, common carriers. So common carriers, by law, are required to exercise extraordinary diligence. So extraordinary diligence will uh, take um, into consideration all uh, circumstances. So, sobrang ingat. So, lahat ng uh, circumstances, possibilities, etc., they will take into consideration. Kasi nga, public transport yan eh. Kailangan safe yan. So, anyway, to reduce the liability of the common carrier, uh, yung kanyang extraordinary is, let us say, gagawin ng ordinary uh, diligence. Uh, this stipulation must be in uh, writing so that it will be valid. So, uh, tandaan nyo, ang mga pinag na natin is form is required for validity. If you do not comply with the form, the contract is not valid. So anyway, this is covered by 1744 up to 1750. The sale of land through an agent. So, um, agent or attorney in fact or authorized representative, magpapabenta kayo ng lupa. Remember, yung authority na ibibigay nyo dun sa ahente should be in a writing. The authority must be in writing, otherwise, the sale is null and void. So, uh, tandaan nyo, pag nagbenta kayo ng lupa, 
kailangan yung authority ng agent if you sell a land to, through an agent. So, obviously, hindi naman nag apply to if you sell the land directly. So, kung ikaw ang may-ari ng lupa, binenta mo yan, hindi mo na kailangan ng written authorization to an agent because, obviously, you, you do not have an agent. But if, in any case, uh, you appoint an agent, the authority of the agent must be in uh, writing. Otherwise, even if your deed of sale is in writing and it is even notarized, if the authorization of the agent is not in writing, yung buong uh, sale is uh, void. So, uulitin ko. Kung yung authority ng agent mo ay hindi in writing, verbal lang. Inutusan mo yung kapitbahay mo na ibenta yung lupa mo. So, itong si kapitbahay enters into a, a deed of sale uh, with the buyer. Tapos yung deed of sale with the buyer wherein the kapitbahay represents you is uh, in, yung deed of sale is in writing. It is even notarized. Pero yung mismong authorization ng agent is not in writing. Hindi naman required na notarize eh. Sabi lang in writing. Remember class that the entire sale is uh, null and void. Not only the authorization. But the entire sale is null and void. Even if yung mismong deed of sale is in um, uh, writing and even notarized. But obviously, the deed of sale here, um, e, yung nire-refer dito is um, yung uh, entered into by the um, agent. Kasi it can happen na yung agent, hindi siya ang pipirma ng deed of sale. Pagka pirma ng deed of sale, ire-refer uli doon sa uh, seller. So, in that case, the sale is not through an agent. Uh, so, yun ang tandaan natin. No, anyway, a stipulation to pay interest. Pinag-aralan na natin to. Ewan ko na lang kung ba't din yung natatandaan. So, remember, um, yung kunento kong case sa inyo, yung um, hindi nakasulat yung interest, tapos nagbabayad ang debtor ng interest, tapos uh, sa ending, ang nangyari pa, the creditor return portions of uh, the money because yung uh, interest is not uh, stipulated in writing. So, dapat pagka stipulation to pay interest, it is um, in writing. Uh, what else? Um, uh, in contracts of anti-crisis. So, contracts of anti-crisis uh, refers to uh, contracts uh, entered into by a uh, creditor and debtor wherein the creditor is authorized uh, to receive the fruits of an immovable of his debtor with the obligation to apply the fruits of the immovable to the payment of interest and then um, if there is um, uh, a, a remaining amount a remaining para if there is an remaining uh, thereafter to the principal uh, of the credit of the debtor. Sa madaling sabi class, ang pambabayad ng debtor sa creditor ay uh, fruits. Yan ang anti-crisis. So, um, a creditor will receive uh, fruits galing sa lupa ng isang debtor. The creditor will have the obligation to apply the fruits to the payment of interest. Siyempre, converted to money na to, obviously. If owing, kung may interest, and thereafter, to the principal of the credit of the debtor. So, anyway, uh, anti-crisis is defined in 2132, if you want to check it. Um, in contracts of anti-crisis, remember, the amount of the principal and also the interest shall be specified in writing. Otherwise, the contract shall be void. So, yun ang tandaan natin uh, sa anti-crisis. So, what else? Um, number two, letter B pala. Uh, here, not only is the agreement required to be in writing, it is also required to be in a public instrument. So, hindi lang kailangan nakasul hindi lang dapat nakasulat, dapat nakanotaryo pa. Punta ka kay attorney, panotaryo mo donations of real property. So, pagka ang magulang ninyo, binigyan kayo ng lupa, sabi lang, nak, sa na yung lupa dyan. Huwag kayong maniniwala klas, sinungaling sila. Hindi totoong binibigay nila yung lupa. 
hanggat walang um, donation, deed of donation, which is in writing and also nakanotarize. Huwag kayong maniniwala sa mga magulang ninyo. Sinungaling sila class. Kailan magiging valid ang donation? If, remember, the donation is in writing and in a public instrument. Meaning, sinulat nila, uh, typewritten, signed. Yan, may typewritten. Akala mo, may typewriter pa ngayon. Ano? Computerized and then signed by the uh, donors. And thereafter, pinanotaryo kay uh, attorney. So, dun lamang magiging valid ang donation of real property. Pero, remember, meron pang isang part yan. The acceptance must also be made in writing. So, kung ikaw, ang donee, syempre sa'yo binibigay yung lupa, di ba? Uh, you have also to complete an act para maging valid yung donation. So, acceptance may be made in the same deed of donation. Kaya minsan may mga ginagawa kaming a uh, deed of donation and acceptance yan pinagsama na namin yung deed uh, yung donation and also acceptance in the same instrument and also the acceptance may be in a separate instrument as long as it is also a public document so remember class um for donations to be valid it should be donation in writing and public document acceptance in writing and in public document so, yun ang uh, tandaan natin. Or else, the donation is void. So, kung hindi nakasulat pa yan, hindi nakasulat yan, uh, hindi valid yung donation. Ma'am slash sir, ako na po yung nakapwesto sa lupa. Wala namang pakialam yung mga kapatid ko doon. Sa akin na talaga yun. Alam nila. Is the donation valid now? Hindi. It is not valid. Ang kulit naman. Basta sinabing a donation, kailangan nakapublic instrument yung donation mismo and also the acceptance. So, kahit na ano pang gawin nyo sa lupang yan, sa inyo pa yan, tirhan nyo yan, uh, hindi, sa inyo, uh, tirhan nyo yan, hindi pala sa inyo eh, void yung donation eh, tirhan nyo yan, tayuan nyo ng, lu, ng bahay, tayo, uh, taniman nyo ng halaman, uh, sakahin nyo, whatever you will do with this land, sige, gawin nyo, pero hindi sa inyo. Yun ang tandaan nyo. Until and unless, um, a public instrument is uh, executed and also in uh, on the part of the donee a public uh, instrument um, accepting the donation uh, is uh, executed wala talaga hindi valid yan ayan kasi tayong mga Pilipino eh salita salita lang kasi walang ganun class pagka donation it is required to be in writing tiwatiwala lang salita salita kaya la maraming nagdedemandaan sa lupa eh there's a uh, ganyang klasing paniniwala, tiwatiwala at saka ano ba yun? Uh, uh, ano lang, verbalan lang. Ay, pagka narinig ko yung salitang verbalan, nanggigigil ako. Akala nila may right sila. Uh, pero wala. Walang, walang donation kung walang public instrument. So anyway, uh, number two, in case of a contract of partnership, I will qualify this, where real property is contributed. So, remember class, that the contract of partnership should be in writing. So, kung merong partnership, A, B, and C partnership, A contributes cash, B contributes uh, cash, C contributes uh, industry to the partnership. Walang problema yan. Uh, partnership as a general rule is a consensual contract. So, valid yan. But if, let us say, A donates real property or lupa, B donates cash, C donates uh, industry to the partnership, remember, the partnership is uh, is required to be in the contract of partnership is required to be in writing now plus an inventory of the immovable so anyway uh, matututunan nyo rin lahat yan when uh, we discuss um, uh, partnerships so yun ang tandaan natin 1771 and 1773 1772 talks about registration so anyway um, marami rin kayo pagdating sa partnership um, what else? Uh, form, form for enforceability. This is covered by 1403. 1403 talks about unenforceable contracts. Uh, for uh, this purpose, we are talking specifically, kasi tatlo yung unenforceable contracts eh. But uh, for this purpose, we are talking specifically of paragraph uh, 2 
of uh, Article 1403. Paragraph 2 is known as your statute of frauds and perjuries. So, ayan ang spelling niya. Baka mamaya magulang tang na naman kayo. So, paragraph 2 talks about the statute of frauds and perjuries. Yung statute of frauds and perjuries, it requires that the agreements enumerated in the statute maraming naka-enumerate dyan eh pag-aaralan din natin yan when we go to chapter 8 uh, should be in writing so lahat ng naka-enumerate sa paragraph 2 ng 1403 uh, sila yung mga contracts na covered ng statute of frauds and perjuries in other books they just call it statute of frauds so anyway yung mga naka-enumerate na yan they are required to be in writing and also signed by the party's charge or by his agent if the contract is not in writing, the contract is still valid provided that all essential elements, cost, object, and consent are present. But remember, it cannot be proven in court and it is unenforceable. So, pagka nagdemandahan sila, hindi lang sila papansinin ng court. Eh. So, neither party may be compelled by court action to perform. So, in short, ang unenforceable contract is without force and effect. Although, uh, it may be considered valid. Some authors um, consider them as validable. Validable, kasi, validable siya kasi remember, uh, pagka ratify mo ang unenforceable contract, it will become a valid contract. Kanya, tinawag nilang validable. So, kung uh, hindi pa siya nararatify, wala lang siyang kwenta. Nandyan yung contract, yes, pero wala siyang ngipin, wala siyang force, wala siyang effect. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin. Kumbaga, parang walang dating. Yan, ganyan ang uh, uh, mga contracts covered by the statute of fraud. So, they are required to be in um, writing or in some form of memorandum. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin. So, kailangan nakasulat. Or else, uh, itong mga contracts na to, unenforceable. So, 1357 naman and 1358, uh, this will talk about um, form for convenience or greater efficacy. So, sabi ko nga, in some cases, certain form is required for the convenience of the parties para yung kanilang agreement ma-register sa Registry of Property uh, to make it effective against third persons. Now, if the contract is not in writing, remember, okay lang yun. Um, because in 1357, sabi doon sa 1357, um, the parties may compel the other party, the one party can compel the other party to execute the proper public instrument which may be registrable. So anyway, as you can see here, um, baka mamaya yung color na naman na ayaw ko, tama. Non-compliance with the required form would not adversely affect the validity or enforceability of the contract between parties themselves. So, para lang mairehistro, kailangan lang gawin siyang public instrument. So, yun ang tandaan muna natin. So, um, as between the parties, remember, the form is not uh, indispensable. Uh, hindi kailangan na kailangan. But because they are allowed to compel the other to observe the proper form, to execute the proper a public instrument. So, this right may be exercised simultaneously with the action to enforce the contract. So, at the onset, remember, it is essential that the contract is valid and unenforceable. And enforceable. So, what, what is an example of a contract like this one? Uh, let us say, si A, uh, nagbenta siya ng lupa sa inyo. Yan. So, uh, remember, sale of land, uh, should sale of real property should be in writing or else it is unenforceable so yan ang isa sa mga uh, kinocover ng uh, statute of uh, frauds 
So in paragraph E of a uh, uh, number in the letter E of paragraph 2 of article 1403 ang sabi dyan, uh, an agreement of the leasing for a longer period than one year or for the sale of real property or an interest therein remember that it is required to be in uh, writing or uh, some note or memorandum or else the contract is unenforceable so, in short class, pagka nagbebenta kayo ng lupa or bumili kayo ng lupa, dapat mayroong uh, writing. Uh, remember class, the law uh, requires only writing. Hindi naman niya sinabing public instrument. So, let us say class, uh, si A, si seller, binenta niya yung lupa niya kay uh, buyer. And uh, the sale is evidenced by a uh, private instrument. So, uh, usapan lang, sila-sila lang, tapos handwritten lang na uh, instrument kung saan nagbentahan sila ng uh, lupa. Si buyer nagbayad, tinanggap ni seller, nakasulat doon. Si seller um, nagbenta ng lupa, tapos ibinigay yung titulo kay uh, buyer, tapos uh, tinanggap yung pera. So, nakalagay lahat yan, but the instrument is handwritten, the instrument is private. Or pwede naman computerized, basta hindi na notaryo para private. So anyway, so yun ang nangyari. Handwritten and um, uh, not notarized, obviously. So anyway, um, remember class that uh, itong instrument na to, the sale between the parties, yan, kahit na wala pa talagang bayad and wala pa talagang um, wala pa talagang delivery ng title. Oh, but in our example, meron na. O oh, sige, dun muna ako sa example natin. Since, uh, remember, meron ng bayad and meron ng delivery ng title, the sale is already a valid sale. Kasi sabi sa statute of frauds, kailangan lang naman in writing ang sale ng real property. Now, um, remember, okay, valid ang sale between buyer and seller. But it is not registrable. So, yung titulo ni seller, hindi pa rin maililipat ni buyer sa pangalan niya. Paano maililipat ni buyer sa pangalan niya yung titulo? Kailangan si seller ay mag-execute ng public instrument. In 1357, remember, yung contract of sale between buyer and seller is valid. Bakit hindi valid? Eh, merong private writing. Tapos ano, may bayad pa. Merong pang delivery ng titulo. So, talagang kompleto na yung sale. Kaso lang, wala nga siyang registrable document. So, remember, 1357, they are allowed to compel the other to observe the proper form. So, remember here, the buyer can compel the seller to execute a public instrument or a deed of sale na nakanotaryo para, um, para itong si buyer mailipat na niya yung lupa sa pangalan niya. Kasi isasubmit niya yung deed of sale niya sa BIR para makapagbayad siya ng capital gains tax, dog stamps. Tapos, kailangan din um, i-submit yan sa, ano, uh, sa registry of deeds para yung pangalan sa titulo mapalitan na. So, ililipat na siya sa pangalan ng buyer. So, yun ang tandaan natin sa 1357. Now, you will ask, Ma'am slash Sir, paano kung halimbawa walang written instrument? Yan, kahit private ma'am, wala. Basta lang pinag-usapan, tapos diniliver na yung titulo, tapos binayaran na ng buyer deliver ng seller. Remember class, pagka meron ng, remember here, the contract is, the contract of sale is um, fully executed. May bayaran na eh. Ang unenforceable, ang unenforceable contract is yung um, wala pang nag, nagaganap. So, executory contracts. But here, the contract is fully executed na. Um, nagkaroon na ng delivery ng uh, title and nagkaroon na rin ng uh, payment ng price. So, remember, hindi na ito covered ng statute of fraud. So, kahit na wala siyang writing, um, valid pa rin siya. And enforceable. So, a-apply na naman natin ang 1357. Buyer can compel, compel the seller to execute the necessary uh, document. Ma'am slash sir, paano kung halimbawa nag-usap lang sila? O, benta ko na sa yung lupa ko. Tapos, sabi ni buyer, sige, bilin ko. Meron ng agreement as to price, meron ng agreement as to what uh, land or property, uh, what land will be uh, sold. Pero walang writing, walang bayad, 
walang delivery ng title. So, here in this case, remember, the contract is unenforceable. Nalalaglag siya sa statute of frauds. And remember, pagka unenforceable yung contract, hindi siya yung nire-required dito sa 1357. Remember, 1357 sabi, valid and, valid and enforceable. Pero ito, dahil nga unenforceable siya, dahil nga walang writing, remember that the contract, uh, that the parties, that the buyer cannot compel the seller to execute the necessary instrument. So, kung nagdemanda si seller, si buyer pala, wala lang, hindi lang siya papansin din ng korte. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin. Anyway, mas maintindihan nyo yan when we, um, when we discuss unenforceable contracts. So, what about a donation? Yan, a donation. Um, yun nga, magulang ninyo nag-donate ng property sa inyo. Lupa, tapos walang kasulatan kahit na ano. Pero nasa inyo na yung lupa, kayo na yung nakatira doon, yung magulang nyo, nire-recognize na kayo ay, um, kayo ay, kayo na ang may-ari ng lupa na yan. As if. So anyway, um, question. Can you compel your parents to execute the deed of donation? Tapos later on, mag-execute kayo ng deed of acceptance. Remember here, class, that the donation is not valid, not enforceable. So, hindi niya nakuha tong requisite na to. Bakit? Anong sinabi ko kanina? Pagka donation of real property should be in writing, should be a public instrument. Uh, donation and also acceptance. So, here class, dahil nga void yung contract ninyo, the parties cannot compel the donor kuno. Kunwari, hindi naman talaga siya donor. Cannot compel the donor, hindi rin naman talaga siya donor. To execute the necessary instrument because remember the donation is actually void so yun ang tandaan natin contracts which must uh i discuss ko mas mag, uh, mas uh, okay yan sa um unenforceable contracts medyo mahirap kasi dahil hindi, hindi natin nakikita yung um, buong picture so later on you will uh mapapagdugtong nyo lahat yan um 1358, contracts which must appear in a public document for convenience. 1358 and 1357, sila ay um, connected. So, uh, the enumerated contracts here in 1358 are valid contracts uh, and they are enforceable even if they are not contained in a public instrument and in writing. So, in the following, the public instrument will be required only for convenience, for registration, or uh, greater protection of the parties. And also, pagka na-register kasi ang contract, it is binding um, against third person. Sabi pa nila, binding against the entire world, which is true naman. So, anyway, um, uh, acts and contracts which have for their object creation, transmission, and modification or extinguishment of real rights over immovable property. So, let us say, uh, mga rights over immovable properties like a lease or a mortgage ng uh, lupa. So, yung uh, mortgage, as between the, kung walang nakasulat na, in, na walang uh, public instrument, uh, the mortgage between two parties is uh, valid actually. Pero, para ma-register mo yung sangla, pagsasangla ng lupa ng uh, debtor mo. Di ba, ikaw yung creditor. So, sa iyo sinangla yung lupa. So, ikaw din ang mortgagee. So, yung nagsangla ng lupa, debtor, mortgagor. So, para um, para mairehisto mo yung uh, sangla doon sa titulo ng debtor mo. Kasi, remember, kung hindi makabayad yung debtor mo, pwede mong i-foreclose yung sinanglang property. Pero hindi mo pwedeng i-foreclose yan hanggat hindi mo na i-rehisto yung mortgage dun sa titulo. So, uh, para ma-rehisto mo yung mortgage dun sa titulo, remember class na you need a public instrument. So, yung um, mortgagee slash creditor can even compel the debtor slash mortgagor to uh, execute a real estate mortgage uh, which is a public instrument para para ma-register mo yung mortgage mo later on uh, pagka kailangan mo nang i-foreclose kasi hindi makabayad yung debtor madali mo na lamang ma-foreclose ito so mortgage is a contract creating a real right 
So, over immovable property. So, also, pagka um, kinansel mo na yung mortgage, kailangan mo pa rin ng um, uh, the debtor. Pagka kinansel na yung mortgage, ibig, ibig sabihin, bayad na yung debtor. So, the mortgage must be cancelled. The debtor can compel the creditor to execute yung release of real estate or cancellation of real estate mortgage para ma-register niya yung cancellation dun sa titulo. Uh, medyo technical, pero wala tayong magagawa. A session, repudiation, or renunciation of hereditary rights of those or those of the conjugal partnership of gains. So, kung halimbawa, tatlo kayong magkakapatid, tapos uh, namatay ang mga magulang ninyo, magmama na kayo, syempre, yung isa sa inyo, mayaman na. So, gusto na niyang uh, i-repudiate or i-renounce or i-waive yung kanyang hereditary rights. So, okay na sa mga kapatid ko na lamang yung mga pamana ng mga magulang namin. So, if you will repudiate or renounce your hereditary rights, you should do it in writing also. What else? Number three, uh, power to administer property or any other power which has for its object an act appearing or which should appear in a public instrument. So, power to administer property. So, yung mga authorization nyo to your attorney, in fact, to administer property should be in a public instrument. Ito yung mga lumalabas na special power of attorney. Yan, yan yung mga yan. So, it should be in writing, also in a public uh, instrument. What else? Uh, session of actions or rights proceeding from an act appearing in a public instrument. So, um, uh, in connection with our first example, so, mortgagor and mortgagee. So, si mortgagor sinangla niya yung kanyang um, uh, lupa kay uh, mortgage. G. So, debtor sinangla niya yung lupa niya kay uh, creditor. So, the mortgage must appear in a public instrument para ma-register ni mortgagee yung uh, mortgage dun sa titulo ni debtor. Para ma-register ni creditor yung mortgage dun sa titulo ni um, uh, ni debtor. Kasi nga, yung, yung sinangla dito, malamang lamang kay debtor yan. But later on, you will know na pwede mong isang la yung hindi sa'yo. As long as... Um, the owner agrees. So anyway, um, if uh, the creditor will assign his right to the mortgage, um, remember, it must also be in a public instrument. So assignment of rights, public uh, instrument as well. So anyway, uh, these are the rules regarding forms. Uh, please stand by for Chapter 4, Reformation of uh, Instruments. Uh, Thank you class and good night.